The new U.S. Defense Secretary blames Iran for the latest violence against U.S. troops in Iraq. How much truth is there to this accusation? And when Leon Panetta says he'll take unilateral action against the attacks, what will be the repercussions? This is Inside Story. Hello there and a warm welcome to the programme. I'm Laura Kyle. Say some strong remarks from the US Defence Secretary Leon Panetta during his first visit to Iraq since taking the job. Comments that have infuriated some inside the country as well as neighbouring Iran. We're very concerned about uh, Iran and uh, the weapons they're providing uh, to uh, extremists here in Iraq. And the reality is that uh, we've seen the results of that. Uh, in June, uh, we, we lost a hell of a lot of Americans as a result of those attacks. Now, the effort here obviously has to be to push the Iraqis uh, to take on the responsibility of going after some of these Shia groups, going after uh, those that uh, would use those kinds of weapons, going after those weapon stashes to make sure that we can try to hit them uh, before they're uh, put into uh, a capability that can, can uh, go out there and take lives. Well, Panetta went as far as warning that the U.S. would take unilateral military action against Shia groups armed by Iran. U.S. troops remaining in Iraq are there as a training and supportive capacity. It's almost 12 months since Washington announced a formal end to combat operations there. But since June, there's been a rise in the number of attacks against them. Well, Panetta's suggestion of unilateral action has drawn criticism from Muqtada al-Sadr, that's a prominent anti-US Shia cleric. He says they openly mocked Iraq's sovereignty. And Iran's defense minister, Brigadier General Ahmad Vahidi, rejected the claims that Iraq was involved as baseless. He said, Panetta's remarks aim to put the blame on other countries. U.S. hegemony in Iraq has collapsed. Remarks of the defense minister, by which he meant the U.S. defense secretary, resulted from blows of America's political failure. Plenty here to discuss and here to help us do it. We're joined by our three guests in Erbil, Iraq. We have Rai Jarrah, an Iraqi-American political analyst and blogger. In Tehran, Professor of Politics at Tehran University, Sada Zibakulam. And in Paris, Arash Aramesh, an Iran researcher for InsideIran.org with the Century Foundation. That's a US-based think tank. Thank you all very much for joining us. First, I just want to spend a little bit of time clearing up a couple of points. Ray Jarrah, perhaps you can shed some light on the first point I want to raise, which is quite simply, who are the Shia militia attacking the US troops? Because judging by Muqtada al sadas reaction, they may well have some connection to him. There are a number of armed groups in Iraq uh, that have been attacking uh, the US troops in the last few years. Uh, some of them come from a uh, Shia uh, background, some of them from a Sunni background, and others are seculars. Uh, I think what uni unifies them is an ideology uh, against uh, the U.S. Uh, occupation or the U.S. military intervention in Iraq. I think from the, from the Shia side, uh, most of the groups that have been conducting attacks against the U.S., uh, are linked uh, directly and indirectly to uh, the Sadrist movement. Uh, this has been the official position of the movement, and this has been uh, the word on the street that uh, most of the attacks come from uh, forces aff affiliated with Muqtada al-Sadr. Uh, of course, the other major Shia uh, factions in Iraq uh, don't seem to, to be against the U.S. presence to start with, for example, the Islamic Supreme Council of Iraq uh, has never been against the U.S. military presence. So it doesn't make sense that factions allied with it uh, would be attacking the U.S. to start with. Okay. Sada Zibakulam, how aligned are these groups to Iran and is Iran giving them weapons? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, they are um, uh, very much close to Iran that is the Muqtada uh, Sadrist group. But I think the 
the basic point is that uh, if the United States decides unilaterally to attack uh, a Shiite group, or for that matter, a Sunni group, or a secular group, that would be in, uh, in direct violation of the sovereignty of uh, Nuri Maliki's government. Because, uh, first of all, uh, one, one, one ought to ask this simple question of Washington, that whether or not uh, you do recognize the independence and the sovereignty of the Iraqi government. Now, if the United States, if Iran, if Turkey, if Saudi Arabia, or whoever decides to, to operate and to maneuver um, irrespective of the wishes of, uh, of, the, of the present Iraqi government, I think that would be chaos. Arash Aramesh, do you agree with that? Do you agree uh, with unilateral action taken by US troops in, def in their own defense is uh, in direct contradiction of the sovereignty of the Iraqi government? Uh, if the Iranian government is uh, uh, distributing weapons and is training uh, terrorists in Iraq, uh, some of whom are uh, in line with the Sadrist movement, uh, then the U.S. government has the right to protect itself. Uh, it is not against the sovereignty of the Iraqi state. The Iraqi government has fought uh, the Sadrist before, a couple years ago, major fights were waged in the cities of Basra and Najaf and Kufa uh, and the uh, sad city in Iraq against the uh, Jaish al-Mahdi, the Mahdi army, and uh, it seemed that they retreated. Uh, the question here is how much influence actually Muqtada al-Sadr does have on the most radical elements of his own Mahdi army and to what extent uh, he's being played and used by the Iranian government. Uh, the American military presence in Iraq is now uh, no longer uh, a combat presence. It is uh, solely uh, training and support for the Iraqi government. But if American soldiers and coalition soldiers are attacked on Iraqi soil, uh, then the U.S. has the right and does reserve the right to protect itself and to defend itself. What evidence is there that these groups are being supplied by Iran? Uh, there is evidence and there is intelligence that uh, the Mahdi army uh, has received uh, uh, material and uh, other support from the Islamic Republic. Muqtada al sadr spent a great deal of time in the past few years in Tehran when he had no longer a place in Iraq. He fled and went to, Te went to Qom, the holy city of Qom. Uh, the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Forces, the IRGC, has been very active uh, in training uh, the Baj Brigade, who, who have been quite uh, silent in the past few years. They're the, uh, uh, the Hakim forces. Uh, but recent cache of weapons that have been found in Iraq uh, these, found, these, these findings are quite disturbing to the point that the Iranian government has become so audacious and so uh, uh, open about selling and sending weapons that they no longer even clear or clean uh, the serial numbers or the tags on these weapons. It's quite easy to trace them back to Iran. And this is very destabilizing. Iran is in interfering directly in the affairs of a sovereign country, Iraq. And uh, it has to end. It's very destabilizing for the region and for Iraq in particular. Uh, Sada Zibakalam, indeed the U.S. itself has said that Iran is increasingly leaving its fingerprints on weapons used against its forces. Why would it be doing that? Well, first of all, um, we mustn't forget that uh, there is more than three decades of hostility between Iran and, and the United States. And in much the same way that the United States recognize uh, her rights to seek its, uh, its uh, national security, its interest, call it what you like, in Iraq. We must also recognize that uh, by the same token, uh, the Islamic Republic has every right to do uh, whatever that Tehran feels and, and thinks that is appropriate for its um, national, uh, national uh, security. Second, there is a simple question from Washington. Has Mr. Nuri Maliki's government asked you to take care of Muqtada Sadr's army, militia, and, and fighters or not? But how, how is it appropriate to supply weapons to militia in Iraq to protect Iran's national security? How are US troops in Iraq threatening Iran's national security? Well, uh, for the simple reason that uh, time and again, United States has uh, threatened to use uh, military 
uh, action against uh, against um, Iran over its nuclear program, over its uh, uh, political uh, uh, operation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In other words, uh, we must we must remember that uh, that United States uh, is deemed uh, by Tehran as a hostile force, and it's only appropriate and logical that the Islamic regime take whatever uh, measure that, that, that Tehran feels appropriate uh, for, its, uh, uh, for her security and defense. Uh, Raid Jarrah, if I can bring you back in at this point, do you agree that the US troops in Iraq threatens Iran's national security, or is Iraq simply being used as a ground for a proxy war? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, I, I find it very ironic that both of your uh, other guests uh, they condemn one, one side of the intervention and seem to justify the other. Uh, I think the general mood in Iraq is uh, there is a sentiment that is against all interventions, whether it came from Iran or the United States of America. So it's not about where the intervention comes from, it's about it happening. I think some of the claims that were made in the last few minutes are laughable. Uh, when, when a foreign government is interfering in Iraq to protect Iraq's sovereignty from another intervention, how, what does that mean? Uh, Arash Aramesh, if you could perhaps uh, look at those comments and uh, just clear up for us how indeed Iran, Iran or the US is protecting Iraq's sovereignty. The presence of US forces in Iraq is a political and a military reality. American forces are there. Uh, combat forces have withdrawn, but uh, there are American troops and coalition troops still present in Iraq. It is not a question of interference or meddling with internal affairs, yet it's a, it's a question of American soldiers and American personnel coming under attack by Iranian forces or s forces supported by Iran. And that does give the U.S. the right to protect uh, her citizens and to protect her interests when we have thousands of troops still left in Iraq. The problem here is not uh, solely the U.S. presence in Iraq, but it's Iran's uh, uh, regional ambitions to try to expand its sphere of influence uh, to na in, in neighboring countries, not only in neighboring countries, but in other Arab countries in the Persian Gulf, and also in the Levant region, in Syria and in Lebanon. And that raises many, many red flags for U.S. national security. And again, as far as Iraq and American soldiers and American troops present in Iraq is concerned, the U.S. does have the right to take action against those who uh, attack its citizens. Sada uh, Zabakalam, if we can just stay on this point. Yeah. Oh, please, yeah, uh, please, Raya Jarrah, go ahead. Uh, I mean, I wanted to comment on this notion. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, legally and morally not valid uh, to say that the U.S. Uh, foreign military uh, uh, troops here in Iraq have the right to defend themselves. I understand, uh, you know, when you look at it on the micro scale, that might be correct. But when we look at the larger picture, the U.S. forces should not be in Iraq to start with. This is not what, it's not just what I'm saying. Uh, it's what the uh, bilateral security agreement between the U.S. and Iraq says all of the U.S. forces must leave Iraq before the end of this year. This is a binding agreement between the two countries. And I think that is the strategic way to stop the attacks against the U.S. soldiers in Iraq. The strategic way is not to keep U.S. troops and start attacking Iraqis and attacking Iranians, but rather get the U.S. out of this mess that the U.S. should not have came into it to start with get it out, as President Obama has promised, and that will ensure that no U.S. soldiers are, are killed and that it, it will ensure that the U.S. will stop interfering in Iraq and stop breaching Iraq's sovereignty. Okay, well, let's just take, a, take this moment to take a look at where we are with the presence of U.S. troops in Iraq. Some 46,000 remain there, and they're supposed to be leaving by the end of this year. 
But the Iraqi government still hasn't said whether it wants at least some of them to remain beyond that 2011 deadline. Now, U.S. officials have said that Iraq cannot handle the full range of threats it faces without continued American assistance. But the idea remains controversial in Iraq, where hardline politicians are against any extension of the American presence in their country. Now, Iraq's decision should be announced in two weeks. Now, we did see some rather undiplomatic outbursts of frustration from Leon Panetta, Leon Panetta over this indecision. I mean, he actually said, damn it, make a decision. Ray Girard, you're against the U.S. troops being in Iraq, but why is it taking the Iraqi government so long to say that it doesn't want them there anymore? Yeah, you know, I don't disagree with the notion that uh, the Iraqi armed forces are still weak. Uh, I personally do not think that the Iraqi armed forces are trained enough, and I don't think the Iraqi armed forces have the correct uh, political alliances either. Uh, I think Iraqi, the Iraqi armed forces have a crisis of legitimacy, have a crisis of uh, being allied uh, to the, their government and, and country uh, instead of the current situation where they're allied to their political parties. But all of this does not justify a longer U.S. or other types of interventions. You see, the point that I'm trying to make here is that the U.S. and Iranian interventions must end, not because Iraq is ready and it's a beautiful country that everyone is happy. It's actually the contrary. My point is that the U.S. and Iran must end their interventions as soon as possible to allow for Iraqis to work on building their nation, on building the armed forces that have been destroyed, on building the political process that has been mostly a sham so far. So, so I think I, I, what I'm talking about is both what the majority of the Iraqis have been talking about in the last few years. The Iraqi public opinion is overwhelmingly against American and Iranian and other interventions in Iraq. And I think what we're talking about is a binding security agreement that was signed by the U.S. and Iraqi governments. It's agreed upon, and I think it's for the best of both nations to go ahead and end this military intervention uh, by the end of this year. Okay, as far as the back, let's just pick up there a little bit because if we saw the US withdrawing, would we also see an end to Iranian involvement in Iraq? Um, Nora, you see, uh, may I just uh, may I just respond to what uh, um, Aramish said in in Paris uh, and, uh, earlier on? Uh, some of some of his his comments, uh, in my opinion, uh, were quite ironical, because you see, Iran uh, recognizes the sovereignty, the integrity, and the independence of uh, of Iraq government. Now, the Iraqi government, uh, that is to say, Nuri Maliki's government, has been in a very uh, amicable and cordial relations uh, with Tehran. It is the United States who is complaining against, uh, against Iran's uh, behavior, uh, behavior in Iraq. Now, that is very ironical that uh, the Iraqi government has no complaint against Iran. It is the United States that has complained against Iran. Now, uh, that, 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 that's a very ironical uh, uh, situation that uh, Mr. Aramish uh, is, is trying to defend on behalf of the United States. Mr. Aramish, your chance to respond. If we saw the U.S. removed from the equation, would we have amicable neighborly relations? Uh, amicable would be a, a nice word if uh, this was an ideal situation. I want to address a couple of points. First point is, uh, in an ideal world, uh, it would be nice to see American troops leave and the American people would like nothing more than to see their sons and daughter come home uh, safely. However, uh, we know from experience that the Iraqi military is not ready to defend itself. A few years ago when the uh, Iraqi military under the uh, command of Prime Minister Maliki went to uh, fight the Jaish al-Mahdi, the Mahdi army, about 1,500 Iraqi soldiers defected uh, because they uh, didn't want to fight against sh fellow Shiites. So there are sectarian issues. There are legitimacy issues. There are tribalism. There is tri tribalism and sectarianism within the armed forces in Iraq. And uh, if the U.S. is asked to leave, as uh, it is going to do at the end of the year, the U.S. should leave. However, if the uh, Iraqi government, the very sovereign Iraqi government, 
uh, about which your guests have talked about, has, uh, does ask the U.S. to stay and provide some sort of security and protective measures inside Iraq, then the U.S. will think about that. Back to Mr. Ziba Kalam's points, uh, the Iraqi government has complained about Iranian meddling and Iranian interference. Iran has consistently shelled uh, with heavy artillery uh, Iraqi border uh, in north and northeast Iraq, has consistently sent troops and has consistently uh, uh, shelled with artillery along with the Turks from the north. So it's not as if the Iranians here are playing nice and just trying to uh, fight off the American invasion. They are uh, trying to uh, expand their sphere of influence and also protect their own interests. Again, if at the end of the year, uh, the, US, the, the Iraqi government asks the, uh, the Americans not to stay any longer, it, the U.S. should respect that. Uh, but that's something up to the Iraqi government, uh, the elected legitimate Iraqi government, uh, to ask the U.S. Right, Gerard, is, is the Iraqi government, which, let's face it, doesn't even have a cabinet, doesn't have a defense minister, doesn't have an interior minister, is it ready to be without U.S. troops? Can it uh, create a secure environment for its country? As I mentioned earlier, I, I don't, I'm not saying that the Iraqi government is uh, capable and uh, you know, completely ready to run the country by itself and therefore the U.S. should leave. My argument is the exact opposite. It's the contrary of that. I think the Iraqi government is incapable of running the country and does not have enough legitimacy because of the U.S. presence. It's because the government is seen as a puppet government to a foreign occupation. I think the U.S. withdrawal uh, is not, uh, should not come as a result to Iraq solving its problems. The U.S. withdrawal is actually a requirement that the Iraqi government could be able, could become able to move forward and build the country and, and protect Iraq's sovereignty and build the Iraqi armed forces uh, to have a better future. So I think the U.S. withdrawal is essential. It's extremely important, the, the U.S. withdraws. And I'm saying this both as an American as a, and as an Iraqi. It's extremely important for both nations that this military occupation ends by the end of this year. That will help us as Americans move on and, and deal with other, other issues internally and internationally. And it will help Iraqis move on and start building their nation by themselves rather than having another layer of complications okay. which is caused by our presence as Americans. But it does appear, doesn't it, with Leon Panetta's visit and his comments of unilateral action against these Shia groups, it, that, the exact opposite uh, may well be taking place. Uh, Sada Zibakalam, if unilateral action is taken by US presence in Iraq, how might that provoke further Iranian involvement? Well, the, the, the simple question is, uh, what kind of Iraq is best suited for uh, the Islamic uh, Iran? But the answer is that a democratic, a stable, and a peaceful uh, Iraq is, uh, is what it is uh, most appropriate as far as um, Iran is concerned. Because in that case, Iran, Iran, uh, Iran would, would look upon uh, Iraq as a huge market um, uh, for, 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 for investment, for oil technology, etc., etc. In other words, what I'm really trying to say is that Iran has no incentive, Iran has no objective, Iran has no desire that to see Iraq um, uh, felt uh, with, with, with insecurity, with, with lots of uh, armies, with, with lots of foreign intervention. Uh, the only Iraq that actually benefits uh, the Islamic Republic is, uh, is, a, is a peaceful and democratic Iraq. Ar Arash Aramesh, uh, what's your take on that? What's your view that Iran simply wants to see a peaceful Iraq? I couldn't disagree more. Um, I'm very familiar with the works of Dr. Ziba Kalam, and I'm uh, quite uh, stricken here uh, to hear uh, uh, his take that the Iranian government is uh, seeking a democratic Iraq. Uh, the Iranian government wants to destabilize Iraq. The Iranian government would like to uh, turn Iraq into a satellite state. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, 
uh, to take advantage of the sectarian cleavages inside Iraq, uh, support Shiite groups, some of whom are extremely radical, uh, for its own advantage. Um, Iran does not uh, pursue any democratic amb ambitions in Iraq, as, as history shows. We do have to leave our discussion there today. It's been very interesting. We do hope to return to it at some point. I'm sure we will. Many thanks to our guests, Raid Jura in Iraq, Sada Zibakalam in Tehran, and Arash Aramesh in Paris. And thank you, too, for joining us on this edition of Inside Story. Any comments, suggestions, do email us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. Bye for now.